Yeah, Abby and Jess, a witness quickly called police after seeing someone point a gun at the children playing here on this playground. She was actually out there uh, working with one of the kids and, and then the way I understand it, she was leaving. A DHS worker saw something that could have turned into a deadly situation. Observed an individual uh, that was pointing a weapon towards the playground at the horseman. She wasted no time calling for help and alerting the rest of the school. It was actually very well orchestrated from the point that she called 911 immediately. Um, was a quick response from Oklahoma City PD. They quickly removed all the kids from the playground because there were kids at the school. Um, and you know, safeguarded them, went into a lockout procedure. Thanks to the woman's quick response and detailed account of the vehicle, the suspect was caught and arrested not long afterwards. As for Horace Mann Elementary School, expect to see more officers in the area. We requested with Oklahoma City PD to uh, have uh, increased patrolling. Saying situational awareness is a key factor in keeping the kids safe. If you see something like this witness did, say something. Mecca Rain, KOCO 5 News. Yeah, Mecca, see something, say something could have saved a lot of lives. This story is trending online. A man currently running for a seat in our state legislature with a questionable transaction. A campaign finance report listed the title of a pornographic clip as an expense. Jason Reese says no campaign funds were spent on that X rated material. In a statement on Facebook, he said, quote, after thoroughly investigating the issue with our campaign team, we have determined this was the listing. It was a human error on the part of an individual who per the statement report. He went on to say the person responsible resigned. Now, KOCO Zach Rael speaking with Reese tonight about that bizarre listing. He will have his full comments coming up at 10 p.m. All right, now we have some new details on a local case that people across the country have been talking about. A four-week-old, this sweet little baby abandoned on the side of I-40 near Triple X Road. Well, they say the baby's mother also left her car on a rural road nearby. Now, a driver found the baby Saturday afternoon. A short time later, investigators found an abandoned vehicle about a mile away and inside nearly $6,000 in cash, a birth certificate and social security cards. That helped officers identify the baby's mother and she was found just a few minutes later walking along I-40. We can tell you the baby is still in DHS care and it will be up to the district attorney to decide if the mother should be charged. Hundreds of people will lose their jobs when a major food plant in the metro closes down. Employees of Fresh Creative Foods and More confirmed this news to KOCO 5 today. By the way, this location used to be Vaughn Foods and More. KOCO's Crystal Price is live and Crystal people wanting to know why is this closing? Well, Abby and Jess, come December, this food plant will be closing its doors for good. Now, we've been told the reason is the need to consolidate operations. Fresh Creative Foods and More has provided jobs to hundreds over the years. The Oklahoma plant is part of Reesers Fine Foods, a company that provides salads and prepared foods. But soon, these jobs will be lost. KOCO 5 obtained an internal memo sent to all employees earlier this week. The notice says they are constructing a new salad plant in Topeka, Kansas, and they plan to consolidate their salad plants in the Midwest. Therefore, the entire Moore, Oklahoma plant will close and all employees will lose their jobs. The letter says that they expect the closure to take place by December 1st. This plant made headlines back in 2014. It was the scene of a beheading. The suspect in that case, Alton Nolan, is on trial right now in Cleveland County. The business has changed their name from Vaughn Foods to Fresh Creative Foods in recent years. Now, a company representative did confirm in the last hour that this facility will be closing, but they wouldn't give us any other details. Reporting live and more, Crystal Price, KOCO 5 News. All right, Crystal, thank you. The rain moved out last night, but the after effects, they are still visible. We showed you this dramatic rescue here. This was yesterday, a woman's SUV stranded in that high water you see. This is in the Ski Island neighborhood near Hefner and MacArthur. And the guardrail right here, that is the only thing keeping the SUV and woman from being swept away. Now, I want to show you what that area looks like today because we went by there today. Water levels, they were down significantly compared to yesterday. So here's the fresh video. The road's still blocked off, though, because uh, the road was still partially submerged. And, of course, that SUV was still there today. 
We have some new developments as our state health department tries to make ends meet. We'll tell you what they're requesting ahead of employees being forced to take days off without pay. Also, Senator James Langford says he has a solution to keep the so-called dreamers here in the United States. The plan he has in place and why he says it'll work. And he is considered one of baseball's greatest catchers, where you can see all 10 of Johnny Bench's Golden Gloves. Welcome back. You're watching KOCO 5 News at 6 p.m. Imagine this, taking one day off work unpaid every pay period. That is what our state health department announced yesterday for employees who make $35,000 or more. And because of that, today the health department requested an audit to look at things like cash management and how they manage their, their money. The state health department is $10 million in the hole right now. Those furloughs will start at the end of October. We are told they could last through June of next year. Starting Sunday, things may be a little quieter in Woodward. A quiet zone for trains takes effect. This is a four mile area between 48th Street and Lakeview Drive. You may still hear the horns for just a few weeks in that area. It will take a few weeks for train engineers to adjust to this new rule. This one's certainly a hot button issue, protecting the dreamers. Oklahoma's U.S. Senator James Langford introduced new legislation in the response to the DACA debate, what he hopes this will accomplish. And big changes in our weather pattern are headed this way. We are not done with the rain yet. The newest storm threat you need to know. And coming up in sports, are you ready to see this in a Thunder uniform? The Thunder are getting to work in training camp. And Paul George isn't just talking the talk, he's walking the walk. I'll tell you what I mean next on KOCO 5 Sports. The future of 800,000 young undocumented immigrants now in the hands of Congress. This is because the Trump administration, you know, recently announced they will be ending the DACA program. And Marky Martin had a chance to talk with Oklahoma Senator James Langford about why he supports that move. I did, actually, because that shouldn't have been an executive action. That should have always been a congressional action. Congress now given six months to act. Langford introducing the Succeed Act, where undocumented dreamers can earn the right to live here. It puts them in a position where they can apply. They have a background check, make sure there's no criminal, anything, that they're in school, they're in work, they're uh, in military service, whatever it may be, but they're productive members of society at that point. Six months is a really short window for people who were brought here by their parents to now have to plan for a whole new life somewhere else. What's the rush. Congress has not resolved immigration in 30 years, border security, visa reforms, all the things that need to be done that everyone knows needs to be done, but it's never done because there's no deadline. Why should people, why should DACA recipients trust your Succeed Act, Senator, or whatever legislation comes down within the next six months when DACA recipients sure. themselves have just seen their own protections stripped from them? I don't want to leave them in limbo forever. That doesn't help our economy. Uh, that doesn't help our schools. That certainly doesn't help them long term. We've got to get a legislation legislative fix in Oklahoma City. Marky Martin, KOCO 5 News. Marky, great job on that interview. This one, if you're a sports junkie like me, you'll think is pretty cool. All 10 golden gloves belonging to Oklahoma native Johnny Bench are now in the same place tonight. You know, Bench was born here in Oklahoma in Binger. Six of the 10 golden gloves were at the Johnny Bench Museum. His son Bobby tracked down the final four, brought them back to Binger today. Look at that. Some consider Bench, of course, to be one of the best catchers, if not the best, in baseball history. It's real special to just be able to see, you know, not only some, some of these awards that I, I haven't seen since I was a kid. Really, really neat. If Bench's name sounds familiar to you, it could be because he's super famous and legendary or because there's a street in Bricktown named after him. You may have also seen the statue of him outside the Chickasaw Bricktown ballpark. Field meteorologist Michael Armstrong and First Alert Storm Command at Heronville Elementary School today in Oklahoma City. Look all the kids oh, there that cool. he got to talk to. He he talked to them about being prepared for severe weather. They got to check out Storm Command and he showed them just all the cool features we have on that vehicle. Now your first alert forecast certified most accurate. Yeah, Storm Command easily one of the best storm chasing vehicles out there. More technology in Storm Command than you will probably have on any of your uh, computers or even any of those big network centers. There's a lot that is inside Storm Command. Really cool. As we look outside on first alert Doppler radar here, you can see there's some showers out there. Now the rain's going to continue mainly out across southern Oklahoma as we go into the next few days here. It's not going to be all that heavy, but still as we have seen, 
over the last couple of days. We just have a lot of rain here and there for OKC. Our rain chances really beginning to wrap up finding some light to moderate rain from Elmore City up to Paul's Valley. Winnie Wood Joy all this moving up to the northeast towards Winnet, Asher, Byers going into Lake Kanawha here. Even as you go towards Maud Seminole, we're going to see more rain. It's going to stay light, but it will be steady at times as we go into the next few hours, even as we go out towards Holdenville, down towards Calvin and down towards Stewart here. So this is where the rain's going to stay for many of us tonight out across southern and even going into southwestern Oklahoma here. Look at our rain chance for OKC. It stays at about a 20% chance. We're going to have Clinton, Hobart, southwestern Oklahoma and southern Oklahoma as seeing the best chance for showers. As we go into the overnight, there'll be another round of rain after midnight tonight and then by tomorrow afternoon. Our rain chance is primarily going to be out across western Oklahoma for Oklahoma City. All those high school football games tomorrow night, they look just fine. It has been wet all week long, but this rainy weather pattern is beginning to show signs of wrapping up. But not for long because brand new information coming in shows yet another change in our pattern on the way. But what at least this rain has helped do for us is help kick out all the nasty pollen that we've had grass low. Ragweed medium. Now mold has seen an uptick, but as we go into the next few days, look for ragweed to begin to climb until it begins to rain again. And you will see those changes coming in here in just a few days. So this is what we have ongoing. First off, with our chance for rain or a chance for some warmer weather coming in, it will arrive as we go into the weekend. It has been a very cool week, but as we go into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we get our temperatures back into 80s. It will be sunny. It will feel wonderful. But look what happens on Tuesday. We start to see that drop in our temperatures as they begin to go back down. That right there is your next storm chance arriving in here. So here we go. More storms on the way. Big change is coming. Here comes our next chance for rain next Tuesday. But our highest rain chance for next week is now setting up for Wednesday. A good portion of the state here already looking at a 40% chance of rain. So we've already picked up two, three, four inches of rain this week alone. How much more are we going to add as we go into next week? How about another 10th to a few areas up to about one inch of rain? So we're not done. The rain just keeps coming back into the forecast and you're going to see that as we go into October. So temperatures for the next few days, mid to upper 70s, as we showed you climbing into the 80s. And then here comes that rain chance for Tuesday going into Wednesday. Thursday and Friday of next week. And you're up to date with the latest first alert forecast. Now, KOCO 5 Sports with Carson Cunningham. While Carmelo Mania continues in Oklahoma City, and rightfully so, it's Paul George who arrives at the peak of his powers. He's one of the best two way players in the NBA, meaning he's great on offense and defense. But it's not all fun and games so far at training camp. Paul takes his craft seriously. 